For anyone who's not familiar with how they operate, interlocking towers basically controlled blocks of track, or small sections of track within the tower's field of view, for lack of a better term. Signals were present wherever there was a very busy section of a line where several tracks crossed over one another, like if the New York Central's tracks crossed over those of the Lackawanna's. Most commonly, you'd find signals where one section of a track would move to another through the use of switches, like at Tower 49A, where switches were used to move trains between any one of the four tracks of the New York Central Main Line. The switches needed to be controlled from one location where an operator would set a switch to line up a train for its destination and set the signal to the appropriate display for the engineer on the locomotive, like stop or proceed with caution. You couldn't have more than one train on a track at the same time within the block that was under the control of the local interlocking tower. The result of ignoring that rule would be disaster. There was no such thing as centralized traffic control as there is now. Trains were controlled by guys who had to follow rules and orders to the strictest abilities. There was very little margin for error. Interlocking towers usually had one operator, but depending on how busy the trackage was that the tower controlled, there may have been two or more operators in the tower. Switches on the tracks were linked to the tower through a series of pipes. Everything was mounted to an interlocking machine, which was controlled by huge levers that needed to be pulled or pushed by hand. So the term interlocking means that a very specific pattern of levers needed to be set by the operator which would lock in the correct position, thus moving a switch outside on the tracks and setting a signal. What the operator was doing, basically, was setting the correct route of the train. Everything had to be set or locked into position correctly before an appropriate signal would be given to allow for train movements. The interlocking machine itself was an early type of computer. The ingenious design of the interlocking mechanism allowed the operator to manipulate various levers without permitting conflicting routes and thus preventing accidents. Each interlocking machine was custom designed and built for the specific section of track it was meant to control. According to an article I found on the Hoosier Valley Railroad Museum website, when a location for an interlocking tower was found, the interlocking machine was installed at the site first. Then the building would be built around the machine. The towers were built as two-story structures because of the size and complexity of the interlocking machine. The inner workings of the machine were located on the first floor, while the operator was on the second floor. Regardless of the technical operation of interlocking towers, they've always had a romance about them. To the casual observer, they were the solitary structure on the side of a busy main line of the railroad tracks. They most often had a single operator whose job was to control the trains at all hours of the day, every day, regardless of the weather. It was a solitary lifestyle, just the operator and his trains. For me, the lone interlocking tower on the side of the railroad track conjures up images of cold, snowy evenings in Buffalo. Inside the tower, a pot-bellied stove sits in a corner keeping things warm, while a Seth Thomas regulator clock ticks away the minutes, chiming on the hour. The tower operator sits at his post, pipe in his mouth, reading the paper, until either a telephone call or a message from the intercom speaker barks out messages from the dispatcher with switching orders for an approaching train. Armed with these orders, the towerman gets to work at the interlocking machine, pulling and pushing the huge levers that will line up the switches for the correct movement of the oncoming train. And once the train passes, the quiet ticking of the clock resumes its rhythm as the towerman resets the switches and then goes back to his paper. <laughs>